Week makes. What a different one what, what difference one week makes in our lives. Now we are just a group of Christians. We're not a cult and we're not highly religious. Uh, but we are believers and we come from different denominations. We believe in the one Lord, the one Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe. So we just come together. If you've got any questions, there's a table of free information you can take away. You can come and ask us questions. We do not know everything, but we know enough. And if you want prayer for anything, come to us. There's many guys here spread around who will listen to you and talk with you and listen to you and pray for you. So that's where we come from. We're not religious in that sense because if you look through history, you will find that many religious people don't know God, they don't know what he says, they might wear a cross around their neck. That is no guarantee that that person is a saved believer. You can go to church all your life and not be saved and then you're standing before the Creator one day and it'll be too late. And many do. They go to church. They actually think by attending church they have eternal life. And that's not what Jesus says. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say go to church and you'll be okay. He doesn't say that. Yes, gathering together is part of it. However, look, last year you probably remember me just saying, Richard Branson, who was a multi-billionaire, spent 17 years designing his spacecraft, and then off he went up into space. There he is, you'll see it on YouTube, and you can see what he says. Let me ask you a question. What did Richard Branson say when he looked out the window of his jet and he looked at the beautiful creation, the colour of the earth, the dark skies, the space behind? He could have said anything. What do you think he said, Richard Branson? Here's a man who's not particularly, as far as I know, religious. I don't know him. Maybe he is. But he doesn't come across like that. He's never talked about it. But the first words he said when he looked out at creation was, OMG, OMG, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. That's what he said. So what happened to him was creation. His soul cried out to creation. That was his response. OMG, OMG. Now, just a few weeks ago, this is one of my favourites, William Shatner, who's 90 years old, and he played Captain Kirk in that series. Do you remember that? Star Trek. I was raised on that. Um, he went up into Vsauce's spaceship, and he looked at, he went out to space, and when he came back down, he couldn't get out the capsule. If you go and watch it online, he couldn't get out the capsule. And when he did, William Shatner, there he is, when he did, he couldn't speak. This is 90-year-old William Shatner, and he had tears running down his eyes. Again, a different man, and his soul was crying out at what he had seen. I've never seen it like he did, but he was speechless. And when he came round, got himself together, he said, everyone in the world should see what I have seen. So this is creation. I don't want to get into it too deep today, but creation came about not by just some explosion. You cannot get something from nothing. You cannot get something from nothing. There's too much precise design in the creation for it just to happen. Nothing just happens. We know that. So when you look at scientists, and I love science, scientists have uh, found out that there are 
Beat Ford and Gothic Constance in the design of the galaxy and the universe that are so precise it's unbelievable. One of them, I'm only going to cover one of them, we're using it right now. And we don't think about it. We're using what God made right now, and it's called gravity. We use it every day, and we don't think about it. We don't get up in the morning and say, oh, shall I go out downtown today and do some shopping? Is gravity working? We don't think like that. We just take it for granted that gravity keeps us where we are. We have life on this earth. Well, let me astound you with precision. Let's just look at gravity. Gravity says, if it changed by 0.000, that's to the 38th decimal point. You can have a look at this. That's it there. That's a very small, minute fraction. 0.000000 to the 38th decimal point. If gravity, which we're using now, if it changed just that fraction, we would no longer be here and the sun would no longer be where it is. We would have no life. And you say, Les, what's that got to do with anything? Well, look at these buildings here. These buildings, these shops, just did not sprout out the ground last summer. We know looking at them, behind them, there is a designer, a builder, an architect. We know they didn't sprout out the ground. Now, the precision I've just talked about with gravity alone is far more precise than those buildings. There must be a designer behind gravity. You, you, you know, you, if I was to say to you, these buildings just dropped out, the come out the ground, you would say, Les, you're crazy. You would say I was crazy. And you'd be right. We know they did. You're absolutely bonkers. Yes, that's right, sir. Thank you. And so are those people that think these buildings just come out the ground. That's what I just said. So when we look at creation, when we look at the design of the galaxy, the precision that is in the design of the galaxy is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Which tells me easily, and that's what scientists are finding out, there must be a designer behind that creation. And there is. Let me just read to you a second. Let me just read to you. Woohoo! Here we go. Thousands of years ago, this was written. In whom we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. See, gravity is invisible. You can't see it, touch it, or smell it. And it's like God. You can't see him, touch him, or smell him. But the creation is all around you. And it says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. So there... That Jesus created gravity. Whether there be thrones or dominions or principles or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So what it says there is in the designer, everything is held within him. Within the designer, within the creator. That means us as well. Let me just read you another one. Because we know that this is quite a serious case this week. We know 
what's happened in this last few days in Ukraine. I have friends in Kiev, in Ukraine. And Jesus said over 2,022 years ago, he said, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in different places. Now, was Jesus right? He's right again. And when you look at what he says, what scripture says, you find out he's right again. These are not my words. This is not me making something up like you would see on the internet, like you would see on Facebook or, or YouTube or whatever the others are, Twitter. You don't get things made up in scripture. This is not made up if you read it properly. So therefore, he is the creator of all things. So I ask you a question, is Jesus right? <laughs> is Jesus right? You can't get nothing. Nothing creates everything. Now, here's the loving part. I'm sharing, I'm sharing everything with you. It's just sharing a good message. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, this creator, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So without believing in him, you will perish. That's what the Lord said. These are not my words. I'm not making this up. These are his words. But have everlasting, but believe in the name should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a wonderful piece of good news for all of us as we go about our life. And you say, well, I don't need Jesus. I'm good. Really? Ask yourself a question. I'm not judging you. You ask yourself. Are you a good person? I put myself there as well. Ask yourself this. How many lies have you told in your life? 10, 20, 15, 10,000? Too many you can't remember. What do you call someone who tells lies? You call them a thief. Let me ask you another one. Have you ever taken anything that does not belong to you? Even if it's a pencil at school, what do you call someone who takes things that does not belong to them? You call them a thief. That's what they're called. We just call a tree. So we call that tree. We don't call that giraffe. Let me ask you another one. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? I think today that's very commonplace because you've got pornography 24 7. Jesus took it further again, and he's right. He says, if you looked at another person with lust in your heart, you created adultery therein. Let me ask you one more. Have you ever cursed God? This is the creator I'm talking about, who gave all of us life. I'm the same as you. I'm not judging you. He gave us life. He gave us two eyes, two ears to see us. Here, knows the smell of wonderful life, things to experience. He gave us that. He gave us the wind and the rain. We need the wind and the rain. It's amazing. I know we all say, oh, that wind, but we actually need the wind. And he made, like I said earlier on, he made gravity, which we use every day. So ask yourself. I'm not judging you, you judge yourself. I, I was like you, just to say, I have to ask myself the same questions. And when you stand before God on that day, ask yourself, are you innocent or are you guilty? What are those, if there is a God in your mind, if there is a God, will you be innocent or guilty? Now, I've heard all my life, all my life, I'm in my 60s now, but I've heard all my life 
about aliens. There's aliens here. There's aliens there. Oh, we've got an encounter with an alien. I've heard it all my life. Never seen any evidence whatsoever. And I believe that when they get you to focus on aliens, they try to tell you that there's no creator. And I've heard that all my life about aliens. Not once have they ever produced one. Not once have they ever given any evidence. But there are scores of evidence of Jesus Christ. There are scores of evidence of what he did, what he said. It was written down. There were witnesses of what he did. There are witnesses of what he said. But we ignore that, don't we? We say, oh no, I believe in aliens. There's aliens <laughs> with no evidence. So I'm just saying, ask yourself, this issue, when you stand before him on your day, and you will, I will have one last breath in this county one day. I don't know what day it is, but I will. There's a reason. Do you know what God did? Because he loves us so much. There's a reason that he came down as the word of God, manifested himself into flesh to look like us, and then he related to us, and he went to the cross, and he paid that price on the cross that I should pay. I should be paying that cross for my past life. And he did that for you also. You see, Scripture says this, and man doesn't want to hear this. Scripture says this, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Because you see, you will not, and I will not, be able to stand before God on my day and boast to him and talk him out of it and try and sell him on some idea. He knows everything about me. He knows every hair on my head. He can count every hair on my head. So it's by grace we are saved. You see, man doesn't want to hear that. They want to do it themselves. Look what I did. That's why they, they, they say by works. Some religions do it by works. I've done this, I've done that. What are you going to do with that work? Are you going to stand before God and say, God, the creator of the universe, this is what I did, look how good I am. That's not what it is. That's why Christ went to the cross as God, man of flesh. They killed him for nothing. And his blood was shed as a sacrifice that if we would turn and put our trust in him, and put our trust on the cross, that's what faith is. Faith is about trusting. You have faith in your husband. You have faith in your wife. That's similar. You put your trust in them. Put your trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross and you will be saved and the instant you sincerely do that you will have eternal life with God because you will have eternal life without him I'm talking about eternal life with God there's a wonderful word in the scriptures it says whosoever and it goes like this whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved it doesn't matter what color skin you are. It doesn't matter what culture you are. It doesn't matter what country you were raised in. It doesn't matter what you were taught uh, in religion. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's my good news to you this morning, Northampton, on this sunny, blue sky, partly cloudy day. Thank you for listening. God bless you.